thing. Come on, pass the peas. Pass the peas. Pass the peas. Like they used to say. Come on, pass the peas. Wittenstein. Pass the peas. Pass the peas. Like they used to say. from Mobile, Alabama. Okay. Actually, I was born in uh, Columbus, Georgia. My father was in the Army, you know, okay. he was at Fort Benning, Georgia. Okay. And uh, I, I spent my first two years in, in, uh, in Columbus, Georgia. But my father was from Mobile, so we moved to Mobile, and that's where, that's where uh, I was raised, in Mobile, Alabama. Okay. Yeah. What inspired you to start picking up the trumpet at a young age? Because in your time, there was a lot of segregation. Oh, yeah. You know, and yeah. to come through that and, and, and put down some musical groundwork, you had to be inspired by something. Well, look, my father was a musician. Oh, yeah? He played the piano, and uh, 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 long story short, he had a big band in Mobile, and uh, he needed a trombone player. Mm -hmm. I was, I was uh, in school. I was in a... Uh, junior high school and elementary school and I was practicing on the piano. My, right. gra my grandma was a piano teacher, okay. so I played the piano. And uh, um, uh, my father had a big band and I was I was learning trumpet mm -hmm. and trum and uh, saxophone okay. with uh, E.B. Coleman. He was my band master, you know. Okay. But my father needed a <laughs> trombone player. So okay. he told me, say, if you learn how to play trombone by the end of the summer, this was the first part of the summer, so you can play in the band. Right. Now I'm 12 years old, you know. <laughs> what? He gonna let me play in the band? Right. At 12 years old? Right. <laughs> now, you know, uh, I used to set up the band, uh, the stands for the rehearsals, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, um, uh, I always wanted to be in the band. The right. Band, you know, and I, uh, all his friends were my friends. All right. the people in the band. So when he told me I could play in the band, at, uh, at 12 years old, I, I said, I give me a trombone. He got me a trombone, and I practiced on that trombone every day, you know. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I didn't never, I never learned how to play the trombone really correctly. Okay. Until I got in the army, but. So you self-taught. Actually, yeah. Man, that's hard. And, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I knew, I knew about music because my, my grandma was a piano teacher, and, mm -hmm. uh, uh, he was a musician, you know, my father mm -hmm. was. But the trombone, I just learned how to play the trombone. Oh, okay. And, uh, he let me play in his band, and uh, the rest is history. Man. I went from there and played with uh, with some of the bands around town, Mobile, mm -hmm. and uh, blues band, and R and B band, right. you know, and uh, Dixieland band. We, we, had a, <laughs> we had a Dixieland band called the Excelsior Marching Band. You know? Okay. <laughs> we used to play for Mardi Gras. You, you, Mardi you know about Mardi Gras? I heard some of the functions of Mardi Gras. Is that Mardi, Mardi Gras you know? was a, is a, is a, is big in New Orleans. Right, right. But it was also big in Mobile. A lot of people don't know that. That's right. A lot right. of people don't know that it first started in Mobile. Okay. In Mobile, the carnival. Mighty Gras season was was a big deal for us, you know. I played in that band, and mm -hmm. I, so yeah, that's where I came. Man, yeah. so as you got older, you got into the industry, right? You start getting active into the music industry itself. I played in 
all the bands around Mobile. Right. Uh, it, anytime somebody needed a musician, whether it was a guitar, a trombone, a mm -hmm. saxophone, they would call me, you know, mm -hmm. a bass player. And I played a little bass, played a little drums, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, I actually uh, played saxophone parts on trombone. Mm -hmm. I played guitar parts on trombone. The first funky lick I learned was... Right. Biddy be the bomb. Biddy be the bomb. A thing by, right. by Bobby Bland called Further On Up the Road. Remember Bobby Bland? Yeah. He yeah. the one who wrote that song, Ain't No Love in the Heart of the City, right? Ain't No Love. Yeah, that's way later. Yeah, yeah. Way later, but, but uh, he did uh, 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 Further On Up the Road mm -hmm. and uh, Don't Cry No More. That, okay. that, was, that was a big hit for that All that stuff is you know? All right. Yeah. So you start moving along in the 50s, yeah. and then later on you got with, it was the James Brown family. James yeah. Brown. My first big gig, mm -hmm. I played one gig with B.B. King. B.B. King? B.B. King was, oh, uh, uh, he was a, a big in Mobile, and he had a bus, mm -hmm. and his band on the bus, and B.B. B. King bus had, had broken down somewhere up in Hattiesburg, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. Well, Gulfport, Mississippi was close to Mobile. Okay. Because uh, it, uh, it was about 50 miles away. B.B. was in, in Gulfport. He needed a band to play in Gulfport, Mississippi. Okay. So uh, he had a bass player that used to play with B.B. With, uh, get him a band mm -hmm. to come to Gulfport and put, put it together. You okay. Know? So I was in that band that we'd be playing together. You know, I was... I was about 15, 16 years old. So you've been doing this a long time. How many years would you calculate that you've been doing this music thing that you love? 60 years, 60, 60 Was it the love years. for it? Love and passion oh, for yeah. it? Oh, yeah. You know, I always wanted to be a musician. You know, all, all, my, my, all my father's friends were my friends. You know, mm -hmm. they, were, they, were, they were good musicians. And uh, I learned from them. You know, I learned what to do and what not to never do, you mm -hmm. know. But... Uh, yeah, I, 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 I never had a doubt about what I wanted to do. You, know? you write music too, right, Mr. Wesley? I eventually learned how to write music. Yeah. You know, I, didn't I mean, it. like the notes, you write notes, because I, yeah. re I remember hearing yeah. somebody said you write the notes in music. <laughs> yeah, I do, um, I use Finale now, mm -hmm. this is a music program that uh, that's on the, uh, mm -hmm. on the uh, computer, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, yeah, I, 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 I do. I, I write music, that's what I'm doing now. I'm writing music for, uh, for this uh, uh, documentary that we're going to do with Lichtenstein. You know? Right, right, right. Got some of my old friends from Mobile, they're uh, they going to go over there with me and, uh, and play a little bit. You know, so. Now there's a lot of people that don't know it all the history that needs to be known about Mr. Wesley himself. He played a big part. 95% uh, of our hip-hop music came off of sampling. You know that. And that's not, they agree they, that's not creative, but you gotta have something creative. You have to be inspired by something. Um, some people I can run down, um, Eric B. and Rock Kim sampled you. Uh, Puff Daddy, yeah. Public Enemy, yeah. Kwame, the list goes on and on and on. The Big Payback. Now, I'm going to tell you, I got a whooping off of Big Payback. So that song will always stick with me. Yeah. When I got in trouble in school, my father went and got the belt, and it was playing in the background. Mm -hmm. And what I remember the most is, hit him, Fred! <laughs> Big Payback. Yeah. And um, that was a that's something that always stuck with me. And I'm, and I'm talking maybe 30-something years ago. I know that song was older than that. But the big payback record, there's a lot of stuff with a lot of your your um saxophone and trumpet licks on it yeah. that people have sampled. Was you aware of that or somebody I, had to bring that to your attention? My son, uh, <laughs> Frederick the Third. Shout out to Frederick the Third. That's yeah. my man right there. He would point out to me the samples, you know. Mm -hmm. For instance, um, uh, that's the way love goes. That's the way love uh, goes. Uh, Janet Jackson. Janet Jackson. And and in sync. And, and he showed showed me how one one of my tunes was mm -hmm. not it was Jane Brown's tune, right? But I put it together for her, you right? Know? And, I, and I get part of part of the credit okay. for it. And uh, it, it was the guitar part on that that uh, that he pointed out to me was was it was big in that tune. Uh, mm -hmm. That's the way love goes. That that's one of the biggest ones I ever had. Even on um, Vanessa Williams. And Vanessa with the Vanessa Williams, I actually played with her. Okay, I was okay. in the studio with her and then. Okay. Uh, this, uh, I don't know if they use a sample or not, mm -hmm. but uh, Vanessa Williams actually said Fred. Yeah, I remember that. Fred, that's, that's, <laughs> I remember that too. And you know, Father's Day, we <laughs> ride around like I was telling you in Charleston. I had to take you higher in the Fred part. 
Fair yeah. part. Your name was called in a lot of songs, but the most thing that strikes me the most is I've been around you for for twenty some years of my life. You right. executive produced my first first project that we did for Japan, right. yeah. and I always tell people about it. But you always remain humble, like you wasn't trying to act like you was more than what you was. You always had conversations with us about music, even in the barbershop. Yeah. How did you remain so humble with all it's, the things you've been through? Well, you know, that James Brown, when, when I went with James Brown, I, I just took James Brown gig as a way to get out of Mobile, Alabama. Okay. You know, Mobile is in the South, and all the the real hip jazz mm -hmm. ambition, that's what I wanted to do. Okay, I okay. Jazz, you know? okay. But in, uh, in New York, you know, and uh, in L.A., and in Chicago and places like that, you know. Right. So I was just just trying to get out of Mobile, trying to get to New York or L.A. or some big city mm -hmm. where I could be heard as a great jazz trumpet player, you know. All right. But uh, uh, things happen. This mm -hmm. happened. That happened. Mm -hmm. And James Brown uh, installed me as his band leader. Mm. And I, I I really didn't want to do it. I, I didn't want to do it, but I, I it, was, it was so much money mm -hmm. and so much so much uh, uh, recognition mm -hmm. I got from being James Brown band that I had to stay there, you know, okay. because it wasn't much happening to me at the jazz trombone player. Right, you know, right. JJ Johnson, George Bohannon, mm -hmm. Steve Turr, they were already really playing a lot of jazz, you know, okay. and nobody actually heard the jazz that I was playing. I actually. I think that I'm better than all of them. Right. <laughs> right, right. Play jazz, but that's neither here nor there. Right. Because I, I, I'm known as a funky trombone player. Mm -hmm. Because James Brown, he, he would say, play a solo. Now, I think that James Brown wanted me to play so that he didn't have to bow down to Maceo. Maceo, Mace, yes. Maceo was his soloist. Right. And uh, and then he found out I could play solos too. Mm -hmm. Now he had somebody he could work against, Maceo. You know, right. he say Maceo act up, he get Fred to play the solo. Right. You know? In fact, let me get Fred to play some solo just to shut him up a little bit. Right. You know? <laughs> so let me ask you: I don't know the, if that's the, true. The, the biggest that riot they had in '68 when uh, Martin <laughs> King passed. Mm -hmm. Y'all had a show in Boston. Was you a part of that venue? I just got the bag. Mm -hmm. just in the band. Okay, yeah. you was there that night when everybody was acting kind of ready. Let me talk to my people. For a minute, you know, you can see my slide just just coming into the left side of the screen. You right, know? right. You can see that video. You right. Know? You can see my slide just coming in, but I didn't even have a uniform yet. What? Yeah. <laughs> but all, all those tunes, uh, Jay Brown. When I went back with Jay, I, I left in 1970. You did? Okay. Yeah. And uh, I came back with James in '71, and. Uh, those tunes, uh, past the peas, past the peas, like the used to say, right? And uh, doing it to death, you know. James Brown gave me that band, and, and he said, said this is how, cause Maceo had left. He had taken the, the whole band with him. Okay, Maceo and all the King's men. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna make Fred a, a star. That, that was his thing. Right, know? right. So he gave me Fred Wesley and the JB. I remember that. You know, I remember that. Yeah. I remember that. And uh, we had past the peas. Give me some more all the, all the string of hits. Mm -hmm. Five albums we did. Mm -hmm. uh, Breaking Bread, uh, 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 Damn Right I'm Somebody, you know, all, all these all those records. But James Brown had signed a contract with Polydor Records. I remember Polydor, the record label he was down with. And uh, they, he had to do a certain number of albums a year, you mm -hmm. know. And so he'd say he'd do some Fred Wesley to JV's album. So that, that's how I got to be Fred Wesley. Oh, okay. I still wanted to play jazz. Though, you know? <laughs> right. I, I'm, still I'm, at hunger. I, so, I, I, I wanted to, to be the great jazz trombone player, you know. Oh, but, man. but then uh, we had a hit, a mm -hmm. big hit. Doing it to death. Right. But the tippy gonna have a broken good Just got to listen to it, yo. And then James Brown said, Fred, Fred. And, uh, <laughs> the rest is history, you know. I so let me ask you, being with Polydor Records, back then you had um, the Detroit, who was those, um, Motown. you had Detroit, Motown, yeah. you had Stax Records. Y'all could have went anywhere. I know those offers was on the table for you guys, or y'all just wanted to be nope, independent? No, nope, it wasn't no y'all wanted to be nothing. James <laughs> Brown, he just, controlled he controlled the whole thing. He just, I didn't want to be no no, no artist. I didn't even think about just wanted being to do the, the music part. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even want to do the music part, really. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, I, I just kind of fell into it. You right, know? right. And I just happened to be there mm -hmm. and to be able to do what he needed done right. at the time he needed it done. There were some big shoes because y'all played with the big bands. Man. You know, I, mean, I, had to, I had to, look here, I learned so much in those four years I was, I was doing it for James mm -hmm. that, I, I mean, the stuff that had lasted me forever. You know, mm. I, I have to thank James Brown for, right. for even though... I don't know if he intended it, mm -hmm. but he did make me the legend that yeah. I am today. That's real. You know? Because yeah. a lot of people try to take things from Mr. Brown, you know? And they try to say that he was control freak and they, the movie. I know the movie. The only thing I ain't liked about the movie is I, I, I didn't like the way they try to polish him as, you know what I mean? He was a control freak. He was he a had, control he freak. He had to control everything around him, you what? know? And, and uh, the reason I, was, I got along with him so good because... Yes, sir, Mr. Brown. Anything you say, Mr. Brown? Because I don't see y'all have no conflict. You know. I ain't seen no conflict with you and James. I never heard. In the movie? Yeah. Not I wasn't even, in the movie, man. I mean, not, not, not only that, but in, inside of the books and some of the things you read about Brown. Never seen I no never conflict had a conflict. We, I had one conflict with him. He mm -hmm. thought I did the horns on uh, Chocolate City. <laughs> oh, I remember Chocolate City. I didn't even know Chocolate City existed. <laughs> the the Boosie told me and George told me that Chocolate City, that we had a hit record called Chocolate City, hit out. I said, oh, yeah, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, James said, I know you did the horns on that. <laughs> I said, no, sir, I didn't do the horns on that. Right. I'm doing, I only do your horns, you right. know. And uh, at different years, he thought I did that. Then uh, maybe 10 or 12 years later, he came and said, I know you didn't do it, you know. Mm. I said, well, yeah, I told you I didn't do it. <laughs> because I was actually loyal to him at He's the time to. I was with him. But, uh, you know, when, when, when it got too much from me, I just... Had to leave, you know. Now, you've been there to see things transpire from the beginning. And you can honestly say that when money do get involved, it changes a lot of things with groups and with bands and anything. Oh, bands. yeah, yeah de definitely does. You know, if they see one guy uh, in a group mm -hmm. that's uh, sticking out more than another guy, they'll pull that one guy out, you know. Mm. Uh, you've seen it happen with uh, the Commodores. Right. You know, Com you know, you know uh, uh, Clyde with the Commodores, he's the best singer in the world. You right, know? right. And he's a, he's a drummer, he's a good, he used to play with me. Oh, okay. When, when I was in the Army, Clyde, you play with, play with me, and, then, uh, and naturally you see he's a better performer, better drummer, better singer, anything than Lionel Richie. Right. But Lionel Richie, but the, the tall and good looking and right, stuff, you know, right. Again, so they 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 just pulled it out. Great songwriter, great mm, songwriter, you know. Mm. But Clark wrote songs too. He wrote the uh, uh, what's that tune? Is it the Night Shift? Did he write the Night Shift? I don't know. No. The one out there they did from Marvin Gaye. Not bad. That one tune. Ah, uh, uh, anyway, Clark is a good writer too. Okay, but. Uh, uh, Lionel Richie got the pull, and uh, the way Donna Ross got up, right. she got pulled out, you know, because she gave, uh, she gave her very good, <laughs> yeah. So it's a lot of stuff go behind the scenes that people don't know about, right? But but I wouldn't, I wouldn't even in that that far. I just did, we did what James you. told me to do, right, right. And it turned out that that got to be very, very important. So you wasn't caring about the shine; you just wanted to. Live what you felt, your passion, your goals were. You wasn't caring about, I'm going to be a millionaire. I'm going to be a, the biggest trombone player in the world. You wasn't I going for I didn't think about that, you know. I just wanted to play some jazz. It happened. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> but, uh, you know, a lot of things came about because I did what James said, right. you know. And, right. and, and sometimes I hated it. Sometimes I talk about it. Like, <laughs> but then again, if you think about it, and uh, uh, all things considered, mm -hmm. He made me, he made me who I am. Exactly. He made me who I am. And uh, whether I like it or not, mm -hmm. it was his calling my name that made me. Have you read my book? And well, now I'm getting into it. My I'm, book is, uh, I need one of them. Hit Me Fred. That's, Hit Me Fred. Right. Uh, a, 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 a disc jacket from, uh, what was the book? A disc jacket from, from uh, Greenberg, North Carolina, named the book. We were, we were, we were, we were, we were, trying mm -hmm. to find out. What, what we gonna name the book? I got one when I had my good right I need to ask you too, Mr. Yeah. Fred. Um, what would you do? Is there anything you would have done different? I would have been a great jazz drummer. <laughs> <laughs> anything you would have? I mean, I would have had a I would have had a band mm -hmm. that was actually I had a band when I when I moved to Denver. Mm -hmm. I had a band with uh, uh, Bruno Carr, mm -hmm. great drummer, mm -hmm. jazz drummer. 
uh, Joe Barter, great piano player, they're both mm -hmm. dead now, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Ken Walker, just a trio. He's right. a great bass player, he still lives in Denver, mm -hmm. and me, that right. was Fred Wesley Quartet. We used to play gigs around Denver, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, that would have been me. That would have been That would have been me if I had, had a, if I had just done the way I wanted to do. Now, uh, your kids are in the music. Yeah. Did you ever want to try to shield them away from music? Because no, um, no. Barry White said it. He said he always just shielded his kids from music. Oh, well, well you know. <laughs> Different story, yeah. You know? <laughs> well, Barry White, maybe he did, but I, I always wanted my kids to get into music. You know, mm -hmm. Victor, my, uh, my youngest son, mm -hmm. he's a... Uh, He's, he's a band master. He's, a, he's got, got a band in uh, 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 Charleston. Okay. And Frederick, yeah, I, 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 I encouraged him to do what he was doing. You right. know, he never made it big, and right. I, I wasn't in a position where I could help him right. come big. You know, right. but no, I, I wanted him to do. It. You still, you still do shows and stuff overseas. I remember you used to go to oh, Japan. Yeah. You still go to Japan? I haven't been to Japan in maybe seven, eight years, you know. Mm. But I still go to Europe every every summer. I'm going to I'm doing the Montreal Jazz Festival uh next week. Oh okay. Yeah, yeah I'm okay. good. Well first time I've been with my band since since uh March. Oh okay. So okay. I have a band now. Um great band. They all jazz musicians. Mm -hmm. But they all can play funk, you know. I'm, mm. I, I, I'm teaching them how to play funk. Mm. <laughs> now a lot of people don't know. After the transition um, with uh, James Brown, you wanna you went on to do things with Bootsy and the Parliament oh, Funk. Yeah, one of my yeah. favorite, yeah. favorite people. Yeah. Well, I was there with the Mothership first. <laughs> mothership yeah. Connection. Yeah. Where they had the diapers on, oh, where yeah. the diapers going across yeah. the stage and stuff. Yeah. 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 Tell me what that was like, Mr. Fuss. Oh, that was crazy, man. That was. Uh, it was one big party. <laughs> I was with him from 75 to 77. I left, mm. left at the end of 77. It was one big party. One big party. But we did a lot of great music. You know, mm -hmm. George with uh, Boosie and George and mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gary Shatter, right. uh, Jerome Braley. Uh, the whole, all, all the guys used to go in the studio and put down a tune and I used to come behind them and put horns on it, mm. all kind of horns, you know. And uh, it's so much stuff just that we recorded with that's on the shelf right now. Oh, man. There's so much of that, you know. So and I heard that was a spinoff for uh, actually the Roger Troutman and Zap family. That, they kind of helped them get where they needed to Oh, yeah, but Boosie was, was uh, producing Roger. He was? At the, at, when I first went with, with, with them. Boosie had been with James Brown, told me he was going to come get me. I didn't believe that. Oh, yeah, Boosie was with y'all. Y'all kind of um, rocked with that. Was he like, wasn't oh, with you when you was in the group? Uh, okay. Well, for a little while. We okay. were together, but that was only about a month. You know what I'm saying? But uh, he came back and got me, and uh, when I first heard that, that, uh, that Boosie was coming down, mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. Yeah. It's different. They don't beat it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he made it sound so big. It was big. And I, I said, okay, I'm in. <laughs> Here. We call him Green. 
If you're down with OPP, y'all gotta respond with, yeah, you know me. All right? So we're gonna do this like this. Now check it out. You're down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. You're down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. You're down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. You're down with OPP? You're down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. You're down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. You're down with OPP? Yeah, you know me. Then that means that you're down with me. When you listen to I'd Rather Be With You, I bet I'll be with you. he's not saying, is that him doing all of that rage with that mud bone? Oh, yeah. He did a rage with but uh, he's just the talking part, right? He's, yeah, yeah. Because them notes is in there. So the uh, mud bone, it, it had a great band. Uh, put the horny horn together, Rick Gardner, mm -hmm. Kush. And, uh, actually, you know, a great jazz musician, mm -hmm. Marcus Belgrade played on a lot of that booster stuff. So I, I take it from you, Mr. Wesley, anything you was involved in, you made sure you got your publishing. That's what I, I didn't make know. sure, but I mean, I make sure now. Right, okay, now, now you. But uh, uh, it was, I tell you, James Brown, he, he took care of me. Right. He made sure I got publishing on mm -hmm. all that stuff, you know. Because a lot of people say work for hire, and I don't know if it's true when somebody's work for hire. Because a lot of people think you gotta when you're a producer, Mr. Um, Wesley, you have to be the actual one behind the buttons. But they don't know a producer can just be the person that arranged it and bring people in for work for hire. Am I correct? Work for hire even gets paid for now. You know, okay. all all that all that has changed. You okay. know, you can get money work for hire. Uh, 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 the the musicians on, on a lot of these sessions get, get pensions and stuff, right. and they get and, and then of course you get the the royalties for the uh, for the publishing too, right. you know. So it's a lot of way and, to get paid. And a lot of people day, don't know, you know how royalties work. Can you explain them how royalties work when you're a part of a big record or a record period that's making some accumulation out there? Well, uh, publishing. Uh, if you important. get a part, a, part, a part of the publishing, mm -hmm. you, you you get half of what uh, the publishing is. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to explain. Like the publishing company gets half, mm -hmm. and you get the other half. You know. Right. So it, it turns out to be a lot of money if it's a big record. I got a a, a, a plaque from BMI. Right. They BMI. say I get the other half. You know. Oh man, yeah. that's all right. But uh, uh, it's a small little bit of money. Mm -hmm. A uh, small percentage of the record, mm -hmm. but it adds up to some to, to big money. Now you call it the mechanical part, am I right? The mechanical yeah. part. And, and it's it's not just one time. Mm -hmm. It's over and over and over again, you know? It's, does it have to be played for them to get the accumulation yeah. of? Yeah. Okay, cause it had to be played and uh, uh, bought. Okay. The, the mechanical wouldn't they actually buy the record and mm -hmm. buy the CD? You get paid for that too. So are you still? Because now, now with the social media and stuff, you can't really take none of you guys' stuff and just put it out there as a song or anything because it'll wipe it out. You got somebody on the net that's constantly pulling and looking for the, the certain parts. But the thing that a lot of artists need to know now is that when you use that person's music. The best you thing to, to do is it. you gotta pay for it. And right? you, 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 you clear you clear with the publishing company, mm -hmm. you know. So the publishing company actually controls all that. I'm I'm working now to try to get control mm -hmm. of the of the music that I I get a piece of now, right. you know, but uh I, I, I think it's after thirty years that mm -hmm. uh uh you, you, you can get control of your part of it, you know. Mm -hmm. It's in this book here. <laughs> you show the world that book, right? show the people that book right there. There's a book here. Because a lot of us want to be artists, Mr. Wesley, but yeah. we don't know the elements and all it, it takes to be musicians. Because, now, what do you, the thing I want to ask you, what do you feel about today's music, oh, honestly, yeah. from your opinion? 
You, you mean the, 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 the hit music of today? The hit music? I mean, naturally, it's past me, you know. Right. <laughs> I, I still like jazz. Jazz mm -hmm. is what I like. Even the jazz, the way they play jazz today has gone past me, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like some of it. Some of it, I, I cannot understand it. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <laughs> uh, I, and, and, it's, it, and it should be because... Because it needs to change, right? It, Things it, need to change. change. It's just evolving. It's mm -hmm. evolving. And uh, it's evolving past mm -hmm. what I know and what I like, you know. Right. I only like the things that I can understand, you mm -hmm. know. Right. So, like, p artists like like uh, Migo mm -hmm. and uh, Jay-Z mm -hmm. and uh, uh, Kanye West, mm -hmm. I don't understand that, you know. Right. So, I don't, I can't say I don't like it, right. but I, 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 I can't get into it, you know. Mm -hmm. What do you think about a lot of people who are now striving to get some of their publishing back because now a lot of people are going back getting what's theirs. Yeah. You think that uh, some of the industry covered a lot of things, shielded a lot of things from those who it was due to? Yeah, of course they did, you mm -hmm. know. And because uh, back in the day, people would they give people a, a, a say, well, you give me this song, and I, I give you a brand new Cadillac, you mm -hmm. know, because I, I, I know they happened to Little, Little Richard one time. You yeah, know? I heard. And uh, uh, <laughs> you know, man, they got it red, yes. What? And people would, artists in those days, they, they would, they didn't know about publishing, they didn't know how valuable it could be, mm -hmm. and, and, and still, I, I, I didn't understand how valuable my publishing was mm -hmm. until lately, you know, my mm -hmm. daughter's are really scrambling to get get my pu publishing uh, um, uh, owned by me, where I can mm -hmm. own it, you know. Right. But right. Uh, uh, I didn't understand all that stuff, and I right. still don't. I still don't. Right. But they they studied this book, and uh, mm -hmm. they are uh, they gonna get it together for me. Exactly. You know? Actually, for them, because I'm gonna right. die soon. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you on that. But uh, uh, but uh, uh, it, it, it's it's important to do that. You see, back in the day. You give a band some money. Ray Charles did understand this stuff, though. Mm -hmm. He understood, uh, and Quincy Jones then understood mm -hmm. a lot of it too. You know, right. and Barry Gordy and James mm -hmm. James Brown didn't really understand, but he had people that would that tell him. Okay. You know, and, uh, uh, you just, you just had to know. Right. And right. and and if you didn't know, then nobody tell you. Right. Then nobody tell you. So right. you find out these things by themselves. That, that all the artists today. Own their own stuff, mm -hmm. and they are they are millionaires, you know, right, millionaires, right. you know, because they understand that what the very the, the most important thing about music is the public. It, it seems I want to ask you because it seemed like a lot of things from the '50s, '60s, even front part of the '70s was taken from the black artists. You had Elvis who was crooned off of what Chuck Berry. You had yeah. uh, Elton John who played with the Isley Brothers first. That's right. So a lot of things we we didn't never understood music, but but it, people took a lot of things from us. We're trying to get back. Right. They didn't get Even it. Even when I look at long, when I look know. at the Isley Brothers, I remember the Caravan of Love, and they had a string of hits. Yeah. But there's a lot. How did how did you not go into some of those brackets where the tax people came after you? Cause they <laughs> shut a lot of people down. Yeah. Well, I, I was <laughs> right to the side of that. You know. <laughs> right. They they couldn't touch me mm -hmm. because uh. uh like I said, most of what I got came from James Brown. Mm. They could get him, right? But they couldn't get me, you know, because okay. I, I didn't own my stuff. Right. I own, I own uh, my horn. That's what I own. Mm. You know, you know. Mm. I, in, in fact, I, I was so stupid. I didn't even keep the arrangements that I did. <laughs> right. You know, it, I did so much arranging. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it's in New York in some kind of vault. Mm -hmm. It's in Detroit in some kind of vault. I don't even know where it is. You mm -hmm. know? And uh, in fact, uh, my one record that I did do myself, House Party, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we can't even find the, the tape on that. Oh man! <laughs> I mean, it's just so much. There's a lot out there. Just so much stupidity that right. You know that I, that I I just let slide because I wanted to be a what. A jazz musician. That's all I thought about. So you just focused on you. That was your main that focus. That was my main focus. I so needless to say, mine. this genre, the genre of music, had cho it chose you instead of you choosing it. Exactly. <laughs> that, that's exactly right. Right. Yeah. What would you say to people out there upcoming? I want to. I want to speak to the. Uh, 
I don't want to speak to the rappers and, and, and singers and stuff. I want to speak to the people who are behind that because without that bed, you just got a bunch of words. Yeah. I mean, without the bed of music, what would you say to people? Because we get an easy way out. Everything digital now. Yeah. What would you say to the person who got passion, who's playing the trumpets, who's playing the saxophones, stuff of that nature? Well, first of all, you, you, you got to learn all you can about the music business. Right. It is a business, you right. know, and uh, uh, first of all, you learn your instrument, you learn your instrument mm -hmm. as, as well as you can. But along with that, learn the business. Mm -hmm. Learn what, what, what can be... But what can what, what can you make money off of? A lot of times you don't even think about what 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 the money is, you know. Mm -hmm. But but you you think about playing. Mm -hmm. Think about what this playing can make make mm -hmm. you if it's a hit. Mm -hmm. If it's not a hit, think about what you play. I I, I heard a, a person say that I have never made. A lot of time I never made money off of, off of mechanical record, but I never lost money on publishing. Mm -hmm. You have to learn the business. Learn mm -hmm. the business that uh. That, that you're in. It's music business. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be in it, learn. And it, it's kind of hard for some people because I always distinguish the two. I say a gift is something you're born with. Yeah. Talent is something that you got to work on. When me and Fred Wesley III did music, I always felt like he had the gift because his ear. Right, right. And it was a talent for me to work on it because I got tired of sitting around waiting on producers and I learned it from them. Yeah. But the most thing a lot of people don't understand is that you have to spend time, mm -hmm. hours and minutes creating your craft. That's and you got to be different. Yeah. There's no, everybody sounds the same on the radio now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. People don't even listen to the radio. The genres of music has changed. That's changed. And yeah. I wanted to take this time out to tell you, Mr. Wesley, we really, really enjoyed you today. I thank you for these pieces, man. And um, I just want to stay in contact with you, man, and keep, well, man, keep it going, man. We will be in contact. Del, Del Castro on the truth with Mr. Fred Wesley, <laughs> our legend, right here in Manor SC. Y'all better recognize. <laughs> thank, thank you for letting me live in Manor. Yeah. You know? <laughs>